Tim Ben. Ooh. Welcome. It's what I personally think. It's the coolest country on the planet. We're in Mongolia. Yes, I did sleep in one of these things last night. It's called a ger. It's the traditional Mongolian home. It's what allowed them to create the largest empire in the history of the world. Because these don't take that much time to set up. It's kind of cold out here. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to come to Mongolia. I used to play this video game called Age of Empires. And in that game, you could choose a civilization to play as. And the coolest one by far to play as was Mongolia. Genghis Khan. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Most of Mongolia indeed does look like this. Vast, empty grasslands where you won't see a person for miles. You won't see anything. Well, maybe a herd of animals. Maybe a herd of horses. But it was from these vast, empty steppes where you can't grow any food that China's worst enemy emerged. The Mongols. The most feared army up until, well, not very long ago. The Mongols were the Middle Age equivalent of a nuclear weapon. And when you see the territory that they grew up in, you can kind of understand how that happened. You can see the former Soviet influence on Mongolia. Mongolia is definitely the emptiest country I've ever filmed in. It's interesting because it's almost 8 a.m. I'm normally not even awake at this time. But because no one can farm anything here, no one really wakes up that early. They do have, though, what appears to be a 24-hour mini-mart here at the gas station. So, let's check this out. Yeah, you can even take a douche, a shower, here at the mini mart, which is great, because there's no bathroom in that tent that I slept in. Nope, not open. The 24-hour sign is a lie. Is that my old? Hi. No, it's good. Ah. Yeah. Kota. Kota. Yeah. Where's the. Uh, uh, Hun. Yeah. Hun. Yeah. Ja Jahan Mongol. I film. Film. Ah! Yeah. The video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video, video. Yeah. Hi. 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 Ruski? Oh, yeah. Gavar, Gavar, you Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, Okay. Okay. Alright, I, I go now. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's the ruins. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. Now you're no, Mongo. Yeah, Mongo. That was a enlightening conversation. In Mongolia, it may not surprise you to learn that they speak Mongolian. It's not a particularly easy language to learn. But interesting fact, because Mongolia was basically a puppet state of the Soviet Union, for almost 60 years. A lot of people here, especially amongst the older generation, they also speak Russian. Now, my Russian is terrible, but 
Might be able to have some basic conversations through that. So what I believe that old man was trying to tell me is that just behind me are the ruins of the old capital of the Mongolian Empire. The largest land empire the world has ever known. Unfortunately, the gates over there also don't open until 9 a.m. Seems like we gotta wait for the Mongolians all to wake up from their hangovers. Huh? Oh, photo? Okay. I help you. Okay. Ah, uh, just uh, a little. Kalmuki. Oh, okay. Kalmuki. 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 A part of the world I haven't spent much time in. Meeting Kalmykians, Russians, Kazakhs. Just think, just imagine. Within the corners of these four walls used to be the capital, the world's greatest empire. Used to have foreign dignitaries coming from around the world. The Pope sent emissaries here. And then it was destroyed a few centuries later. And then it became a Tibetan style monastery. Finish the Tibetan prayer circle. Now, most people have heard of Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire. Most people have not heard that in the centuries afterward, Mongolia basically became kind of like a Buddhist theocracy. There used to be over 500 temples and other buildings located here. But then, the communist revolution happened. Mongolia became effectively a puppet state of the Soviet Union. And as you may have heard, the Soviet Union wasn't very big on religion. A lot of the temples here were destroyed. And during the communist era, Mongolians had to stop practicing Buddhism. For most of world history, up until very recently, by far the most powerful civilization in the world was China. China just dominated everything. They were ahead of Europe and the Middle East technologically. They were huge. No one could challenge them. But there was just one group of people that they were always afraid of. Of course, you know I'm referring to the Mongols. The Chinese were so afraid of the Mongols that they would try to interfere in the politics of Mongolia. They would try to turn one tribe against another so that they could never unify and be strong enough to challenge China. Long live Genghis Khan. All right, so I only have a couple of days in Mongolia and I really wanted to rent a car. There was literally only one car available. A giant 2002 Dodge Ram riding around like the cartel here in Mongolia. It's uh, my driver, Joloch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just taking a nap. <laughs> Oh, yeah.
Ja, så var nu. Sen, sen. Oh, okay, it's feeding time. Okay. Wow. He's very angry. Very wild. It's okay, it's okay. And these are some real Mongolians right here. This is some real Mongolian shit. Just imagine, 800 years ago, these all would have been getting prepped to go and invade China. Alcohol? Oh, milk? Musk. Asu? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, we can? Okay. Inchiniger. Wow. Okay. So apparently we're about to drink fresh horse milk. And I don't know how to feel about that. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Next for your coro. It's very sour. Tirio, it's just Oh, yeah. Yeah, Oh, you're already finished. Mm. <sighs> this dude went through that milk like a knife through butter. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So, milk. I'm gonna guess this is cheese. I'm gonna hope it's cheese. Oh, <laughs> Oh, okay. Mm. I see now. Not in Oh, I see. Wow. This kid. Wilkie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mongols whiskey. In this house. Whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah. Okay, wow. Mm. Oh, this is like old school Mongolian liquor. I'm a little bit afraid of this. This is a big glass. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Whiskey. Whiskey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whiskey is easier to drink than the milk. No, yeah, no wonder this country is so dangerous. So as you can see, these tents. Oh, gotta watch out for the horse shit. These tents, which are called ger, these are not just a tourist attraction. Mongolians legitimately live in them. And they're actually very convenient. They're easy to set up. You can move around. Because 
You can basically set up shop anywhere you want in Mongolia. All of the land is free to set up on. Well, you can live anywhere. Almost a thousand years ago, the Mongols, as they were invading the entire planet, they used these to set up shop and move rapidly across the continent. My driver is really insisting I keep drinking the milk. It's really very smart how they designed these things. They've got like a skylight at the top that you can cover with the rest of the tent at night during the day. And then open it up to let in air and sunlight. Question. During Torshin, she ends. we got some milk, some horse milk, and some horse snacks for the road. At first I thought my driver was taking me to like a tourist trap or something, but no, these are genuine people. They just gave us all this for, uh, out of kindness. Mongolia. Yeah. This might be the horse whiskey speaking, but Mongolia has to be one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to. I love it out here. I literally wanted to stop the car just to show you this. Here's another animal you can find wandering around Mongolia. Mother effing camels. At some point, Mongolia started importing camels into the country. I think because there's the Gobi Desert in the That's what your average town in Mongolia outside of Ulaanbaatar looks like. In anywhere? In Amsterdam. Oh. oh, hotel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, oh. oh, milk, milk, soup. Tea, tea. Tea, tea. Okay, okay, okay. I already drank that. Okay, okay. Oh, food, food, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. 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 from Ulaanbaatar. He has left behind the traditional Mongol life. I wish I knew what he was saying. Okay. But Mongolian food is basically how can we create meat in different ways? Can we put it in a dumpling? Can we put it and what looks like an empanada. Hojur. Hojur. Hojur, yeah. Hojur, Drutai. Yeah, yeah. One thing I've learned here is that they will always give you more food than you actually need. <laughs> Need to eat as much as a Mongolian wrestler. It's a bit weird to see some sand dunes right in the middle of grasslands. 
due to the brutal weather conditions and the overgrazing of animals. Apparently, Mongolia is losing something like seven kilometers of usable land every year. That is, seven kilometers of grassland are turning into desert every single year. I guess there's not much else to do except turn it into a tourist attraction for the locals. A small city shows up. And by city, I mean, look at this. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Take care. Koi. Now, the big city of Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar, the settled city. People are living normal lives. All right, so it's quickly getting dark here. It's almost nine o'clock here in Mongolia. Before the sun sets, let's quickly make it to the main square and see a statue of the main man himself, Mr. Genghis Khan. Where do I live? Yeah. America. I got a toilet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Still scaring children. Now that I'm here in Ulaanbaatar, the Russian influence is very obvious to see. More specifically, the Soviet influence. Being so close to China, you would think, especially considering there's a part of China called Inner Mongolia, you would expect to look at least a little bit like China, but... Nah, this doesn't feel like China at all. I mean, certainly the fact that Mongolian is written in Cyrillic, the same script that Russian uses, Definitely adds to the Russianness. I'm trying with Mongolian, but it's, it's not easy. It's also no offense to Mongolians. I love you guys. You have a very funny sounding language. You almost kind of have to make like this lisping sound to pronounce it. You gotta sound like the stereotypical nerd from any cartoon. But the way to say thank you is uh I'm not exaggerating. That's how you say it. Oh, I gotta show you one of the coolest things that you can only do in Mongolia. I just found out about this. Apparently, you can stop literally any car on the street. And if they're willing, they'll be your taxi driver. You just tell them where to go, they'll take you there, and you pay them. Let's see if I can make it happen. Okay, that was fast. Hi, Uh, the main square. Sorry? Uh, how do I say, uh, Khan. No taxi. Not taxi? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Are you just helping? Okay. That's for your baby? Yes. Oh, okay. You have, uh, one baby? Two babies? Two babies. Three babies. Okay, Koro. Koro. Wow. My first time in Mongolia. Okay. Yeah. Lucky Mongolia. Oh. Very slow. Uh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very slow. Very slow. Is a peep. Is a Mongol? Yes, Mongol. Okay. Yes, the Mongolia. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Mongolian hospitality. Cheers. Cheers. But you 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 can drink later. Yeah. Okay. Later. <laughs> I pay you money. No. 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 no you see. You sure? Yes. Sure. Oh, okay. Give me a beer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, man. 
ich bez za. Bye bye. How about that? I think that's the first. <laughs> Getting in a stranger's car, they give me a beer, and then drop me off where I'm trying to go. Can't complain. Mongolia has come a long way from living out in the grasslands. We've got the Shangri-La Hotel now. Also people driving Mustangs, a Lexus, Mercedes. Where's all this money coming from? And we finally made it to the central square of Ulaanbaatar. Just as the sun is fully setting and you're probably barely able to see it. <laughs> and there he is, Mr. Boss Man himself, Genghis Khan. All right, cheers. Mongol. There we go. Now, I've been to many countries where they have a statue of some old leader controversial president, an old dictator, stuff like that. This is the first statue of a political leader in a country that I think we can all get behind. Granted, Genghis Khan did kind of genocide millions of people, but I guess genocide was cool back then. Mongolia. That's about all I have to say for today.